got the blueprint. Study my movement more than the two cents. Was losing, now I'm oozing with success. Now I got the tools to beat the stress. I lose because I'm a step ahead of you. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slate. Today we're going to be talking about NXT from April the 5th, 2022. First, let us talk about Gunther. So Gunther did a video. I don't know if it was a video. It was more like a podcast or something where he was asked about the his weight loss and his cha- name change. So um, what was he talking to? He was talking to uh, Wrestling Inc. So... Here's what he said about his weight loss. Um, I guess I eat less. I always worked out, but for the first time, I have really focused on my nutrition. These guys really pushed me. I've got to say, when I was a wrestling fan, I always liked the look of the solid heavyweights in Japan who had a little bit of a gut carrying around, just brawls and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you've got to go with the times and evolve a little bit. And that's what I did. So, I, as I've said before, and... Uh, he has lost a bit of his indefination factor because he's not as big as he was. Um, and I think this show, <laughs> considering this very episode of NXT, saw him getting bench pressed was uh, kind of proof of that. But here's what this was the big thing that they wanted to discuss, which was the name change from Gun- from Walter to Gunther. So he says, uh, did it bother him? He says, not at all. But to be honest, if it would be the other way around and it would be Gunther before Walter, and Walter now, it would be it would have been the same uproar. A lot of people react negatively to change. Change is normal in life, and it's a part of it, and we have to go with it. And he's glad that um, all of Imperium are now in the United States at the same time. But uh, that seems to be a more of a problem <laughs> than anything, <laughs> considering uh, the booking of Imperium recently. So that leads us into the NXT opening segment where Brian Breaker came out there and they got, there was a loud, audible, we want Ziggler chant. Um, other people were saying, no, we don't. But the chant was, we want Ziggler. No, we don't. So it was an honor to induct his father into the Hall of Fame and that he failed at stand and deliver. And he makes no excuses, but he went to WrestleMania and got to hang out with some legends and was inspired and said that he walked away with two things. One, he will headline WrestleMania one day. And two, he's not leaving Dallas without the NXT championship. And uh, he won the title on Raw, and now the belt is back where it belongs. So Gunther comes out, and Gunther is with the rest of Imperium. And he says, nobody really cares about your weekend. People only care about what you do in this ring. And what you do against the ring. So this ended up with Brian challenging him to a title shot tonight. And um, Brian Breaker defeated Gunter clean with the Gorilla Press Slam. And you know what? I am not a fan of this. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, look, I get that, you know, he has lost a lot of weight. He's lost some intimidation factor. I still think he's probably the best guy on the roster. I don't believe that we should have had Brian beat him so easily and beat him so. No, I'm not, I shouldn't say easily because this was not easy. Gunther beat the shit out of Brian Breaker. He really beat the tar out of him. He was beating his ass. So it wasn't easy. I guess we could say soon. Beating him so soon. Um, granted, they did just put the title on Brian Breaker. So having him lose it in his first title defense probably wouldn't have been that smart. Which is why I suggested that Dolph hold it and then lose it to Gunther. And then have Gunther do the job to Brian Breaker. But they just cut out the middleman, and they also cut out the Gunther title run, and just had (laughs) Braun Breaker beat Gunther on a random episode of NXT, which I don't know. I don't know if I I don't know if I like this idea. All right, so throughout the show, this leads us to the um, to the post show thing. We started getting a little interstitials from Joe Gacy. The first one says that you need to have people that you can trust. And that is the most important thing. And that having a family is imperative to success. This was a nice little uh, homage here. This, this was a setup. Now, from this, we saw Draco Anthony and Zion Quinn began to argue. Draco Anthony, um, Zion Quinn was trying to help him, trying to, you know, watch his back. And he's like, I mean, I don't want my back watched, man. So Zion Quinn says, ah, well, maybe you need to be taught a lesson. And now they're going to fight in a couple of weeks. 
Uh, the next one was Joe Gacy talking about chaos. He says, chaos corrupts. And when you're in the midst of chaos, you should reach out to your family. And if you can't control the chaos, it controls you. So this was uh, another continuing the, the family trope. So after Brian Breaker defeats Gunther, there's a message on the screen is Rick Steiner. And he's talking about how much he's proud of Brian Breaker and congratulating him for winning and maintaining the NXT championship. Then you see that Rick Steiner is tied up. And you're like, oh no, what dastardly, oh no, he's caged and tied up? Oh, this man's just well kidnapped. He's kidnapped. And he's been kidnapped by Joe Gacy. Joe Gacy has kidnapped Rick Steiner. Oh my goodness, where was Scott? So, Joe Gacy says that family is everything. And maybe we can teach this old dog some new tricks. And Harlan is rattling like chain across the, the bars. And Gacy is full creep mode in this joint. He's creepy as hell. And I love it. I love this. This is it's campy as hell. Um, obviously. But I love this. This uh Joe Gacy being the next opponent, or maybe Harland being the next opponent, is fine. Like I really, really don't mind that. And I love that they put some heat on this by going to the dad. Like they introduced uh, Rick Steiner, so now we're we're in the middle of it. Y'all wanted Rick Steiner to talk about Rick. We here, baby. <laughs> Rick's been kidnapped by crazy cult leader Joe Gacy. <laughs> this is tremendous. He's being held hostage. <laughs> This is fantastic storytelling, bro. This is just days after the Hall of Fame. So the the company has now openly talking about how, you know, this is this is his son. So this is yeah, this is excellent. This is excellent. Uh I, I love this. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> As much as I love Joe Gacy too, man, this is, this is fun. Gacy's promos make sense that, you know, family is a big part of success. And it, it, that is true, you know, and when you need or in, you know, knee deep in troubles, yes, it is your family that can pull you out of it. And we're in this mid, in, in this midst of this thing now where Gacy is saying, I'm the chaos, you know, I'm chaos. You can't control me. And we know that from his promo at Stand and Deliver, he was talking about wanting to unite people with peace. He went from wanting to unite people with peace to kidnapping Rick Steiner. Like, that is absolutely insane. As much as I love this, that seems that, that doesn't seem to follow logically. <laughs> like, I want to bring people on the path of peace. But first, I want to kidnap your dad. <laughs> I, I need to kidnap your father. To save you. This is for your own good. <laughs> I'm going to kidnap your dad for your own good. Um, but he says he's going to try to trick or teach the old dog some new tricks. So what we what we got here is he's about to try to brainwash Rick Steiner. Oh, my God. Could Rick Steiner become like a full blue haired <laughs> Antifa member? <laughs> oh, God. This is so campy. I love it so much. It's so campy. I love this. Uh, Gacy and Harlan, Rick Steiner, Braun. This is great. This is great shit. So the first match on the show, <laughs> the Creed brothers would defeated Imperium. Fabian Eichner and Marcel Martel. Every member of Imperium was beat tonight. It's not fun. Not good. Um, after the loss, Fabian Eichner walked off his post and left uh, Marcel Bartel behind. Um, Bartel was pretty pissed about this and went to Gunter to complain. Gunter didn't want to hear about it because he wanted to focus on winning the NXT championship and restoring honor to Imperium. Unfortunately, it, that was not to be. So Fabian Eichner is frustrated and he left. I am not a fan, not a fan, not a fan at all of the breaking up of Imperium. I do not like it. 
I don't like it. Do I like it? No. I I don't like it. Uh, the Creed brothers were then attacked by hooded figures. And we were like, who is these hooded guys? And then they take off the hoods. And it's pretty deadly from NXT UK, the former NXT UK tag team champions. I knew who they were. I don't think anybody else did, but I knew who they were. And this is not pretty deadly. <laughs> this is not in the character of pretty deadly. Pretty deadly is like having Sylvain Grande and split him into two different people. That's what pretty deadly is. You know, even if you heard their theme song playing after they attacked the Creed brothers, it's like model silly music. They're supposed to be like fashion guys. Now they're brutal, you know, violent beat em up dudes. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Look, pretty deadly being brought in to replenish the tag team division is good. I don't mind that. Um, they, they do have something as far as being annoying heels. Like they could be the male version of the iconics. I truly believe they have that kind of potential. They could be the male version of the iconics, but they're not tough guys. And this clashes with their characters in terms of them trying to make a name for themselves by jumping people with chairs and beating them up. That's not what the characters are. They're annoying uh, heels. You know, they're really annoying, cocky heels. That's what they are. They were a joke as NXT tag team, NXT UK tag team champions. I don't mean a joke in terms of they lost all the time. I meant they like, they were literally silly dudes who you know were beatable champions, completely beatable. But they were managed to survive through you know trickery and you know deception and that kind of stuff. So I like I don't mind pretty deadly. I don't mind them at all. I know it. There's a lot of people gonna be like who. You know, and that's just the nature of working in NXT UK. If you're going to get the, but, huh? Those guys? And yeah, they're those guys. I wish it had been Symbiosis, um, which is, uh, uh, Eddie, I was about to say Eddie Edwards. I was also about to say Eddie Kingston. Um, shit. I forget what his name is, but I know his name is Eddie. He was the, uh, the manager and his wild, not wild boar, but primate and Tyson T-Bone. <clears throat> Cause they look like two tough guys. That could really get in there and grind it out with the Creed brothers. Pretty deadly. I'm fine with you doing like vignettes for them as they do like their model thing and take pictures and all that kind of stuff. And you build up to them coming in as male divas. Like that could be great. And I really would have preferred for them to do that. Um, but bringing them in this way, eh, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it, how it, how it goes. But pretty deadly definitely have more personality than, than uh, the Grizzly Young veterans do. They just don't have the physique or the uh, the toughness, the, the grit factor. So Toxic, toxic Attraction, they were upset about losing the Tag Team Championships. Gigi Dolan, Dolan blamed Wendy Chu. And JC Jane, she said she's already sick of the Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai reunion. And that they plan to win the Tag Team Championships back. Mandy Rose says that she's going to make sure they win the titles back. Because not only are they Toxic Attraction, but they are the attraction. Later, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez said that they did more damage to themselves than any tag team could do. But now they're back on the same page and they're going to be dominant champions. So the third match on the show, Toxic Attraction defeats Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai to regain the women's tag team championships. Uh, Wendy Chu came out there to the ring. She got shoved from behind by Mandy Rose, who then got thrown into the ring steps. While they were distracted, Raquel Gonzalez hit the Chingoa bomb. There was a three count, but whatever well, was a count, nobody was a visual pin. Nobody did anything. Then there was an attack from behind. They did their finish on Raquel Gonzalez, which is another version of the total elimination that wasn't called total elimination. And Toxic Attraction took the pin. So I don't mind this. Um, afterwards, Dakota Kai. Uh, threw an absolute tantrum and said that Mandy Rose is not safe. She wants her a piece of Mandy Rose and she will be wrestling Mandy Rose for the NXT women's title next week. Is it possible that Dakota Kai, the ghost of NXT past, will walk around as the NXT women's champion? I honestly think there's a chance. I wouldn't do it personally. I don't 
think it's a great idea personally, but if they're going to move the belt off of Mandy Rose, who are they going to move it to? They, there really is nobody else other than Dakota Kai who has the tenure and it would be a great story in terms of she finally achieves her dream. She's now a baby face again, even though she's a, a Raven lunatic, she's a baby face again. I'm just not sure if Dakota Kai is the right one or not. Um, but I, I really don't have any other options. So I guess Dakota Kai could win the title. I don't see why. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> but if I'm going to give a prediction, my prediction is that Dakota Kai will probably win the title. That's what I think. And I think Wendy Chu and Raquel Gonzalez are going to make sure she wins the title. And um, that ought to be fine. They ought to make it a lumberjack match just to get all the people who are going to possibly interfere out there from at the beginning. But it should be a good match because Mandy Rose has definitely improved. And Dakota Kai, if nothing else, her work in the ring is actually not bad. So Cameron Grimes made good on his promise and he was in the ring to talk about it. He was interrupted by Solo Sokoa who said that championships are in my bloodline. And that got a lot of people going, ooh, so, ooh, 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 ooh. So, apparently Carmelo Hayes has already been phased out. And uh, Cameron Grimes is the guy. And Solo Sokoa will take the top contender spot. Will it be for next week? Um, I'm guessing it's going to be a one-week thing. And Solo Sokoa is just going to get beat. Um, But still, interesting matchup. I don't think Solo Sokoa is going much of anywhere fast. So it's just going to be another clean win for Cameron Grimes, which is no, that's, got, that's not too bad. It's not bad to win matches. Uh, Tiffany Stratton complained that a sc- stupid schoolgirl ruined her matches and that she's not a loser. Her daddy would never let her be called a loser. And so she's going to have to fix this Saray problem. Okay, cool. Uh, Dexter Loomis and Duke Hudson had a, le- had a match that led to a double count out. Because these two idiots somehow managed to ram each other into the ring post because the women kept pulling on them. It was like a tug of war. This was absolutely stupid. I'm hating this storyline more and more every week. Um, so it is what it is. I hate it. I hate it so much. Uh, AJ Galanti. AJ Galanti. He's in the ring to do the ceremony to, in, to make Tony D'Angelo the Don of NXT. Um, AJ Galante told us all about him. He, get, he ran down his resume, but I wasn't paying attention because he's not a wrestler and he talks dry. So, uh, so I didn't care. Uh, Tony D'Angelo came in there. They did a scene where you know he supposedly put his blood on the card and and all this good stuff about him being you know the new Don of NXT. So it became official. Tony D'Angelo was made. He's the he's the new Don of NXT. Later, he's in the vaunted NXT parking lot where other noted sc- slime bog scumbag Santos Escobar appears. And he says, oh, I'm very, very proud of you. You're doing a good job. But just make sure your business doesn't interfere with Legado de Fantasma's business and it will be all good. And he walked away and Tony D'Angelo looked at like, who, who is this guy? Like, who does this guy think he is? Stunat. What is this guy? Who do you think he is? Um, I'm all about Santos Escobar being the biggest boss that you've seen thus far. And, you know, him, his Mexican mafia thing he's got going on. And now Tony D'Angelo is kind of like, hey, I need some boys. I'm going to need a couple of guys. I'm going to need to call a couple of guys. It would be nice if they were on good terms with, like, uh, the old FBI from ECW. I know Tracy Smothers is dead. I know a lot of those other guys probably are dead. But little Guido, he, he's got to be doing something. Like, he was the face of that group. Uh, you, you probably know him as Nunzio. Bringing him in would probably be super fun to help get over Tony D'Angelo. Because he's small. He probably can't work anymore. He's probably too old to work. But he could be the manager. He could be the voice you know, of Tony D'Angelo. He can bring that that New York Italian thing to the Chicago Italian thing that uh, Tony D'Angelo is doing 
and they can meld and it could be great. Why they won't do it? I have no idea. Maybe there's a reason why Nunzio is not welcome. Maybe. But I would bring him in. I'd get rid of this AJ Galante dude. He has no personality whatsoever. Uh, Cringe SK was up next. Uh, Cringe SK is a is, is an issue. It is a problem on multiple counts. Um, I forgot to mention this in the news and notes. So here it is, 20 minutes in. Nash Carter of MSK was accused of abusing his wife, who was a pro wrestler Kimberly. If you don't know who Kimberly is, Kimberly was a female pro wrestler who worked for Impact. She was um, one of Sue Young's, uh, I don't want to use the word slaves, but she was uh, basically a Sue Young type of character. And she's been talking about this whole thing for a while about how Nash Carter supposedly abused her. And she's been getting kind of dragged on Twitter about this because people think that she's, you know, fucking around. And um, it's probably not the best thing to do because uh, this comp- this relationship is pretty complicated. It seems like she seems to be all over the place where she's talking about being a proud wife while at the same time talking about she's being abused. And, um, she's put, posted some pictures of herself with like a slumped face and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's real, real, real damning information. And hopefully Nash Carter will not lose his gig, but, uh, the bruises aren't really, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave that up to people to see for themselves, the pictures of how Kimberly looks and whether they think she's being abused or not. But ultimately uh, MSK being on this show shows that WWE probably is not too concerned about her allegations. And, um, she, this was just a couple of days ago that she put out this whole thing about how she was being abused, you know, and it's sad. This is truly sad. It's sad whether it's true or not true. If it's not true, it's very, very sad that she would lie about it and she should go to jail for lying. Um, apparently she hasn't gone to the police. She's just, you know, on Twitter trying to ruin the guy's reputation and saying that, uh, she's tired of keeping it in and all this other stuff. But this is awful. You know, it's awful for the young guy's career. Nash Carter is not that old. If I remember correctly, he's probably still in his twenties. Um, the, the due to WWE having a zero tolerance on domestic violence, this is a, a immediate firing. You know, if they find anything up with this guy, he's immediately fired. There is no second chance. They have a zero tolerance on domestic violence. If he gets arrested or something like that, it's over, you know, and um, hopefully, hopefully this is Kimberly just basically being nutty. That would be the least best, the the least of the problems, because at least you can deal with her being nutty. You can write her off in the future. You can throw her in jail for lying and committing fraud and all that kind of shit. But at least nobody actually got beat up. You know, nobody is going to suffer more than she will for the lies that she did. Um, so hopefully this is not, you know, a big deal. But this was interesting enough for me to bring up. And it's actually, you know, something that's very important. So Cringe SK, uh, they are... MS Cringe. They were talking about how great it was to be the tag team champions again and um, all that stuff. Then Grayson Waller showed up with Sangha and essentially they talked about, hey, we, we made a lot more noise at Stand and Deliver than you guys did. We went viral even though I ended up hurting myself. And then uh, Cringe SK says, oh, yeah, well, well, when you guys are ready, we'll give you a shot. So apparently next week it will be Sangha and Grayson Waller versus MSK. Uh, I'm not a fan of Sangha continuing to lose these matches this way, but I don't see them taking the belts off of MSK if they just gave it to them. Now, I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. But I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't think so. All right. So the main event of the evening, Last Legend versus Nikita Lions in World's Thickest Challenge. To my left, Last Legend. A woman that is as thick as a Reese cup and moves like a jar of Jeff's peanut butter. On my right, 
is the Pog goddess herself, Nikita Lyons, the blonde bomber, big booty nunchuck girl. All right, so we we in for it. We in for it. You got you got thicky. You got thick. We got thicky Williams, big booty nunchuck girl, and they're going to collide into a match. And they went into it. Uh, Last Legend botched a couple of times. You know, uh, it, it just comes with the territory, including the finish. She botched the finish too. But hey, again, it comes with the territory. Uh, the match itself was not the worst outing from Last Legend. She certainly had worse matches, but it still wasn't very good. You know, it was okay. Um, Akita Lyons, of course, is continuing to grow. She's actually more, far more agile than Last Legend. So, but I still enjoyed the match. It wasn't the best match in the world, but it was still highly enjoyable because it was a storyline built into it. And we, this was kind of the blow off to it. So we got to see, you know, who's the, who's the baddest in NXT is. And I had Bobby Brown jaw the whole time. Let me tell you. Uh huh. Bobby Brown jaw. Look, I'm telling you, this is, uh, this was something. It was something. It was amazing. It was pretty good. All right, so the, this episode of NXT is in the books. Uh, NXT 2.0 from April 5th, 2022. Fun show. Um, disagree with Gunter losing. Disagree with them breaking up Imperium. Don't like either one of those ideas. Did like uh, Toxic Attraction winning the titles back. They probably should have never have lost them in the first place. It was a narrative device to create the storyline for Dakota Kai. Uh, Dakota Kai possibly winning the title. So like, so likelihood. Um, so this is a good setup. They didn't do any zany adventure stuff on this show, which is kind of what I'm looking for in the next team. Now I want more zany adventure stuff, but this is a very solid show. You know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, like share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Thank you.